Today we're going to show you how to install a Tusk LED light bar onto your side-by-side. -side. We've got a 2015 Polaris Razor S900 in our shop today, and we're going to drastically improve this machine's lighting by adding a Tusk 30-inch LED light bar onto the front roll bar. The Tusk LED light bars are available in different lengths and come complete with a plug-and-play harness, a lighted switch, and rubber-mounted L-brackets to mount it to your machine. We've also put together machine-specific light bar kits that come with the correct size roll bar clamps so you don't have to spend any time searching for the correct clamps. And this is the kit that we'll be using on this razor. The first thing you want to do is read over the provided set of instructions and make sure all the parts and hardware are accounted for. After that, we can start assembling our light bar mounts. So we're going to start by disassembling the provided clamps. Once we've got both of those taken apart, We'll position the rubber damper into place underneath the L bracket and then we'll take one of the provided 6 by 25 millimeter button head bolts and we'll slide that up through the clamp, through the rubber piece, and then through the L bracket and a lock washer and nut will thread on the end of the bolt. Since the razor machines have a narrow roll cage, these mounts are going to attach to the A pillar and not to the top horizontal crossbar. If you're mounting this onto a different machine, the L bracket would just need to rotate 90 degrees from what's shown in the video on the roll bar clamps. So we'll go ahead and get both those L brackets attached to the clamps and tighten down, and then we're ready to move over to the machine. So to have the access that we need to mount the clamps and run the wires, we're going to temporarily fold this machine's roof back out of the way. After that, we'll take one of the roll bar clamps and attach it to the driver's side A pillar. We're using the provided rubber strip to prevent it from scratching the roll cage and also note that we have the flat side of the L bracket facing towards the center of the machine. This is positioned basically as high as we can get it and we might need to adjust this so we'll just lightly snug the bolts down for now. Now we can move to the passenger side and repeat those steps to mount the other clamp. Notice that we've got the flat side of the L bracket facing the center of the machine. With both clamps now loosely installed, Get a buddy to help raise the light bar up and attach it to the mounts. This step's going to require the provided 25mm spacers and both the 8 by 45 millimeter hex head bolts. If you're mounting this onto a different machine using the horizontal crossbar, you'd only need the 8 by 16 millimeter Allen head bolts to attach the light bar to the L brackets. So we're going to need to adjust the angle of the light a little later, so again we're just going to lightly snug both these mounting bolts down. The next step is to level and center the light bar on the machine. For this razor, we slid the clamps up the A pillars as far as they can go, and then we'll make sure that it's centered between them. Once we've done that, we'll go ahead and tighten down the clamp hardware. Now we're ready to move on to the wiring. So we're going to take the wire lead coming from the light bar, and we'll connect the Deutsch connector to the matching connector coming from the harness. After that, we'll move down the harness and find the two bullet connectors, and we're going to just temporarily disconnect those for now. Doing that's going to make it easier to run those wires where we need to. On the newer razors, we found that they've made an access hole at the top and bottom of the A pillar so you can cleanly run wires for a light bar or any other accessory on top of the machine, and that's what we're going to use for these wires. You're going to have to determine the best route for these wires on your machine. So we're going to go ahead and use a long piece of wire and run that up the inside of the A-pillar. Then we'll route it up and out of the top access hole. After that we can attach the end of the wire to that. And then go ahead and pull those wires down through the A-pillar. After we've got those wires run down through, we're going to move up to the front of the machine and remove the hood. And we're also going to remove the two bolts that are holding the dash assembly in place. Once those are both out, we're going to slide the dash assembly back towards the rear of the machine, being careful not to accidentally disconnect any wiring. This will give us access to continue running our wires. So next we're going to run them down through the hole in the plastic right at the bottom of the A-pillar, and we'll pull those down into the space behind the dash. At this point, we can reconnect the two bullet connectors. Just keep red to red and black to black. The next step is mounting the light switch. So we'll take the remaining wire harness and we're going to temporarily disconnect the light bar switch from that. After that, we need to decide where we want the light switch to be mounted. And this can really be anywhere on the dash. 
But once you have a location picked out, go ahead and mark that. And then we're gonna drill that hole using a three quarter inch drill bit. Make sure that when the bit does go through that you aren't gonna hit any wiring or anything else behind the dash. So after we get that hole drilled, we're gonna clean up the hole a little bit. And then we can run those switch wires through that hole and snap the switch into place. Moving back up to the front of the machine, we can reconnect the switch back to the wiring harness and now we're ready to locate our power source. We recommend using a key on power for this so the light bar can't accidentally be left on when the machine is turned off. The newer razors come stock with an accessory block located underneath the hood and this already has a key on power and ground built into it. If you need to, use a test light to find a key on power. This will just be any wire that only has power when the key is turned on. Once you've found your key on power source, go ahead and connect the positive lead to it. And then for the ground, just find an existing bolt on the frame and connect the negative lead to that. For this machine, we just needed to run our wires through the rubber grommet and then up to the designated posts on the accessory block. So now we're going to go ahead and connect these wires and tighten both the nuts down. And then after we've done that, we should be ready to test the light. So now with the machine turned on, you should be able to turn the light bar on and you'll also want to make sure that the switch light illuminates with the light bar on. If everything's working correctly, we can go back through and tie up any loose wiring. Next we'll put the dash back into place and then reinstall the machine's hood and reattach our roof. The last thing we need to do is aim the beam of the light bar. This is obviously easier to do when it's night or when it's dark out, but once you get it positioned where you want, go ahead and tighten down the two hex bolts the rest of the way, and now you're ready to ride. If you have any other questions about the Tusk LED light bars, visit our website www.rockymountainatvmc.com where you can learn more information, read customer reviews, and easily find the right setup for your machine. Thanks for watching.